Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name's Anna and I'm a random stranger on the internet talking to you about beauty. All right, today I am actually doing a product review and a three look tutorial. Uh, a really weird tutorial because I wanted to do a fancy like voiceover in it and then I remembered that my mic isn't actually gonna get here for a couple days. Darn you, Amazon. <laughs> so like halfway through the first tutorial, I just start talking and you'll be like, that's weird just just roll with it guys you know I'm a hot mess over here so all right so the product that we're going to be reviewing and talking about actually I have a couple of them um, but the main one is this right here this is the new wet n wild I believe it was coffin time I believe if it's not the correct name I'll put it like somewhere down here I peeled off the sticker to get into it and it doesn't say it anywhere else on the packaging so but this right here is part of their Halloween collection they released three uh, 10 pan palettes part of their Halloween line and then they also did a set of glitter I got one of them this is the neutral glitter as well as a whole bunch of other things there were some like um, liquid lipsticks and stuff like that. Uh, I saw this actually on another person's channel and I can't even remember who at this point, but I watched her tutorial or her review of a large part of the collection. And I remember when she flashed this up there, I was like, oh my God, yes, 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 yes. I'm, I'm getting that. I love it. I have been so <laughs> into orange eyeshadows since I rolled in that orange in my project pan and I was just like this is my color shade like I loved this I loved this I love all this everything but the black I was just enamored with and so I was just like well I'm definitely gonna go get this and then when I was there I also saw the glitter shades and I thought well that could be fun you know I think those are fun little glitters I haven't really got around to reviewing the glitters yet they I played with them a little bit this weekend. They act like a glitter topper, you know. So if you have ever worked with a glitter topper, you've worked with these before. Uh, the pigment is fine. It doesn't really have a pigment. It's more of a glitter. I will say I played with them with my nieces over Labor Day weekend. Because whenever I put on makeup, they were all like, Aunt Anna, put makeup on me. Put makeup on me. And my sister is like also into beauty so she's very much into letting them express themselves but we have a rule when we do makeup with Aunt Anna or when they do makeup with mommy and makeup is supposed to be fun we put on makeup because it makes us happy because it lets us play with colors and it's like coloring on our face but not with markers because that's bad makeup is for the face markers are not but we don't put on makeup because we want to be pretty because we're already pretty makeup's just fun which side notes i love that philosophy i know i'm going on this crazy tangent but really my niece's philosophies toward makeup should be something that we all exemplify and i'm super proud of my sister for teaching her kids that that makeup is supposed to be fun and to make us happy but not to make us pretty because we're already pretty but back to this product, I did put it on them quite a bit because if you're only doing makeup for fun, this is fun. This is really fun, especially if you're like a seven-year-old and a three-year-old. And even my nephew kind of, I mean, he's in that stage where he's very much like, I'm into boy things, but even he kind of, you know, just a little bit of glitter, mainly glitter. But yes, uh, they were fun to play with with kids. The Lasting Life didn't seem to be overly strong, but again, I was observing it on a seven-year-old and a three-year-old, so I don't know if even the best of makeup could hold up to them. So I haven't really played with this a great deal. I also, as a side note, I don't think this was part of their Halloween collection. I picked up this right here. It is one of their nail polishes in Your Acuity, just because, again, I've been loving everything orange. And this formula, the Wet n Wild Mega Last formula, has actually historically been one of my favorite formulas. However, this color I don't think is particularly flattering on my skin tone. That's on me. That's not on the nail polish. But I haven't bought a nail polish in a long time because I've been trying to actually downsize that collection. I don't know if they've changed the formula or it's just this particular one, but it went on gloopy and it took three coats to kind of get a real opaque 
color and I couldn't get it to dry down. So I would not recommend this. This, sure, buy if you wanna have fun with it, but I haven't spent a lot of time playing with it. But I have spent more time getting into this. I still love the shades. I'm wearing a look with it today and in fact is in my tutorial and I think it is lovely. I think you can get some really fun looks with this particular palette. However, what I will say is if you are a more experienced makeup person, if you have a larger collection or you're used to working with really pigmented shades, this is probably not going to be enjoyable to you. Some of the shades are really pigmented and pick up right away. Some of them you really have to build up and work with. And there's quite a bit of fallout from this. Fallout doesn't really bother me. I am a big ABH fan and they are crazy about their fallout too. Um, but you do have to work a little bit with this palette. So that doesn't automatically disqualify it for me because I have other things in my collection that look like this. That makes me think this is not going to surpass those different things in my collection. Like this is not going to replace my ABH Modern Renaissance or, you know, Subculture, which has a couple of similar shades. Um, I just got a new Tarte palette that has similar shades. It's not gonna take the place of those in my heart. However, this is also like $5 and change. And do I think you get $5 and change worth of looks and use out of it? Yes, I do. I absolutely do think this is worth $5 if you just maybe don't have anything in your collection that already looks like this, or you're just really itching to spend money and you're like, I just want a new fun fall palette to play with. Yeah, go for this. But let me do some swatches for you and then we'll get into the tutorial, all right? The way this palette is set up, there's two transition shades, transition shades. I wanna know who's using black as a transition shade. Like, who is using black as a transition shade? And if you are, I bow down to you. Like, you go girl or boy, like, you rock that out, you rock that black shade out. However, that's not me. I used black as a liner. That's what I use black for. And maybe twice a year I'll use it to deepen the crease but only when I'm feeling real feisty, like real feisty, because I end up looking like a panda. But yeah, so there's this transition shade up here, which for me is a true transition shade. I have it on my lids today. And then they have all these regular pans and then the black shade. So I will swatch these off for you. All right, give me just a minute. I'll come back with the swatches. All right, so here are the shades. I'm sorry I'm so garbage at swatching. Maybe if I do it like this. So I started with the top transition shade and then I just went down the rows to show you a comparison. All right, so kind of picture it like this. That's how it lines up. The black is like the least pigmented of the shades and maybe that's why they mean it as a transition shade. Um, I think that's given the company a lot of credit to be like, hey, this shade is really poop. Like, not very good at all and they're like it's a transition shade and i'm like well maybe but as you can see swatched out they really are beautiful these do i think swatch better than some of the shades actually perform on the lid but again i'm not unhappy with the the powders um you know i think i've paid a lot more money for shadows that performed just as poorly not as poorly, uh, shadows that perform in this manner. Um, so, but I do think you do have to put a bit of effort into getting them to show up the lids, particularly in the shimmer shades. So this one, this one, this one, this one, these two actually. I mean, you gotta, you gotta put some effort into getting it to show up on the lids, but I do again think the result was really lovely. All right, so that's all my thoughts. On this palette basically do you need it no is it a must buy no if you don't have anything in your collection like this if maybe you are a newer artist to makeup like maybe you aren't as experienced in doing makeup 
having a shade that you have actually have to slowly build up is not a bad thing at all. In fact, I think it can be a really good thing for you if you are newer to makeup. Or just to be honest, if you are just really haven't bought anything in a while, you went out and you got your first pumpkin spice latte and you just want a new piece of makeup in your collection that feels like fall but you don't want to spend a lot of money, sure, consider adding this into your collection. It is not bad. Not my favorite, but not bad. So I'd give this a good C plus, and I will give you, following up, a couple of tutorials that showed you how I utilize the shades in this palette. So I just took this transition shade all over the top of the lids and then I went in with this rush shade and kind of smoked it out a little bit up through the tighter to my true crease and then more into the like outer third just creating a really lovely transition of colors there and anytime I do this I always then go back through with the brush from my original shade and just soften everything out. Help create just a really lovely seamless transition. But I don't add any new product into it. All right, now I'm gonna go in with this orange color right here. Sorry about the weirdness of this video. I originally was gonna do a voiceover and then I realized I don't have that equipment yet. So voiceover wouldn't make sense. All right, this is a lot of fallout, but, and it's taking a bit to work the color up, but that's not always a bad thing. All the fallout goes away. Again with that original brush, softening everything. No new product, just a beautiful soft line. Now with the brush that had my original orange, I'm gonna go back in with this shade right here. My flat brush and I'm just gonna do under the eye. back with my original fluffy brush to that darker shade just the tap 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 and then I'm gonna go back and just slightly darken it up tap tap that's what we look like right now Give me just a minute, let me put on mascara and liner, and I'll be right back. All right, so next we're gonna do a really bronzy, work kind of appropriate look. We're gonna start again with, you know it, the transition shade, because you know, it's in the name. We're gonna start again with a fluffy brush and this transition shade up there because you know, it's in the name. I'm gonna take the transition shade into the inner, like outer fourth of my lid.
And I'm gonna take a small brush, smaller fluffy brush, and I'm gonna go into this deep chocolate brown. I really do love this transition shade. I think it's really lovely. I'm using this to deepen up the outer third and up through the crease. This is one of those shades that actually takes quite a bit of work to build up, but I don't mind too much because it's easier to go with a shade that takes too much effort to build up than a shade that takes, you know, that's really easy to, you know, over pigment it and then you have to really blend it out. But I am gonna, again, no new shadow on this. I'm just softening up my lines. I got a bit more of a line than I wanted in that. So just blending, blending, blending. All right, now we're gonna go in to the inner third kind of with this, and then we're gonna blend it out into this bronzy shade. So yellow shade. And this is one that takes a lot of work to get a pigment to show. All right, with that yellow going. I know it looks kind of crazy right now, but let's go in with that bronze shade now. Again, these like shimmer shades take a lot of work. And I'm like going pretty much all over the lid, coming in to touch that gold shade. Just leaving the hint of the golden yellow, going all the way up through the crease. I mean, I'm really building this bronze shade up. Just taking a empty brush, like a, a brush with nothing on it, and I'm just going to gently kind of change everything, sweep it all out, blend, blend, blend. This, by the way, is why I never put on my face makeup until after I've already done my shadow look, because I'm so freaking messy. And then like always, back in with our transition shade, just a dab. Everything's beautiful. That's what it looks like right now. So the shadow part is done. Let me go put on some mascara, touch up my mess, and I will show you this lovely, very work appropriate look. All right, so this is the finished look for the yellow and gold shades. I actually went in and added that yellow shade underneath the eyelid, and I just put on mascara, no liner. I really love this look. I think this is perfect for this September end of summer transitioning into fall where you're like feeling the fall but it's not quite time there yet. Like you're not, you know, it's still like 98 degrees outside but you're still wearing your sweaters inside. But yeah. 
I think it's a really lovely it doesn't seem like it should be a natural look because again we're using yellows we're using that bronze but it actually does come across at least on my blue eyes because the shades aren't crazy pigmented it's actually quite easy to build this up and wear this to something like the office or out and about without being a crazy look so i'll get in a little bit closer you guys can take a look Yeah, this is look number two. What I will say though is it takes a lot of work to build these shades up. A lot of work. This shade right here is very similar to the ABH shade Teak, which I believe is in the Sultry palette. Only like five times as much work to get the shade to show up. But we've covered all that in the review. But yeah, look number two. All right. Next look is going to be kind of our ready goldy look. So let's actually start with this one right here, the brown shade. I know I want to dip into that transition shade, but I feel like we've used that shade a lot and you know what it looks like. So light hand with this, I'm using a big fluffy brush. If you want to take a more intense color and really diffuse it out, but you're getting that shade, then definitely go with a bigger brush because it will just really blend it out for you. Now we're gonna go in with this reddish shade. I'm using a flat brush. And I'm actually going in halfway through the lid and up and through the crease. This reddish shade is actually one of the most pigmented shades in this. And it's one that I really love. All right. So I'm just slowly building up this red shade, taking it through my crease. I don't know if it's red, I don't know if it's rust. I like it, I know that. And I really want it to kind of pop. All right, and then you know, my same old tricks. I take the shade I put my transition on, and I just slowly brush it out. All right, now I'm gonna take a flat brush, and then I'm gonna go in with this gold shade right here. It's a goldy champagne -y shade. Again, I can tell you right now, it's gonna take a lot of work to build this up because these gold shades are not very pigmented. Oh, this one's better. Nope, nope, it's not. You really have got to put in some effort to these shades, these glitter shades. And I'm pulling this across the inner third into where that rust red shade is. Really tapping it off if you're wondering what I'm doing. I'm still getting gold flakes, glitter all over my face, but you know, I'm messy. Same trick, dry brush, just kind of sweep everything together. I'm going for a really nice crisp line, not a crisp line, I'm going through a really blended line. I did touch, put a bit more on here, go through, just touch that up. Just one tiny tap, 
my flat brush again just to get that really lovely shade slightly more blend this is basically how doing my makeup goes for me touch up blend touch up blend touch up blend all right i'm gonna take my flat brush teensy dab i'm gonna pull this rusted shade through here I thought I was going to create a darker look, but this is actually just a really pretty reddish, goldish fall look. And I'm okay with that. I'm, o I'm okay with what is happening on my face right now. Alright, give me a minute. You know the drill. I'm going to put on mascara, liner, touch up all the glitter, and I'll be right back with you to see the final look. Okay, this is the final look from that tutorial. Sorry, like watching a crime documentary. I, this may be my favorite look. I've really loved all three, but I particularly love this look. I like the rosiness, I like the gold. I did change my lip color to be something a little more reddish berry-ish. This feels very fall glam to me. So yeah, I'm pretty pleased with it. All right guys, that was look number three. All right, guys, that was my tutorial. Thanks so much for hanging out with me. Go into the world. Be fabulous. Be you.